This is my first video out of many uh, monthly videos that I'm going to be doing it. And I will be showing to you the popular objects, but also the ones that are not so popular, but they are screaming out there for us to capture them. And those I call gems of the universe. regarding some of the planets and also the moon. Let's take a look. The lunar cycle is 29.5 days, so a full moon occurs roughly every month. In 2025, there will be a total of 12 full moons. The next full moon in 2025, known as the Wolf Moon, will occur on January 13 at 2227 Greenwich Mean Time, which will be around 527 Eastern Time. On January 10, Venus will appear farthest from the Sun on the sky's dome. This is the best time to see the brightest planet. Look for it on the western horizon for a few hours after sunset. This event is called the Greatest Elongation. Venus may be well placed this month, but January is even more special for Mars. On January 16, it will be in opposition to the Sun, shining brightness magnitude minus 1.4, woohoo, and stay invisible all night. Oppositions are the prime time to observe the outer planets, and Mars is special. It only reaches opposition about once every 27 months. The next chance to see the red planet this bright won't be until 2027. So, don't miss out! Ready to hit the planetary jackpot? Step outside just after sunset on the evening of January 21 to see six planets, Mars, Jupiter, Uranus, Neptune, Venus, and Saturn, aligned in the sky. These are sky objects that are more challenging to photograph, but when we do, it's so rewarding and so nice to see them. But we have to pay attention to the magnitude, the color composition, and also the total exposure time. NGC 1788, the Cosmic Bat Nebula. Oh, oh. It located in a dark and forgotten corner of the Orion constellation is a star-forming region with reflection nebula SH2129, oh, this is the beauty, is a large, dim region of ionized hydrogen in the constellation Cepheid. IC443, the Jellyfish Nebula. IC443 is a supernova remnant located in the constellation Gemini. This nebula is approximately 5,000 light years from Earth and estimated to be roughly 70 light years in size. The Headphone Nebula Jones Inversion 1, also known as the Headphone Nebula, is a 14th magnitude planetary nebula in the constellation Lynx at a distance of 16 light years. It is a larger planetary with low surface brightness. The 16.8 magnitude central star is a very blue white dwarf. Oh, this is a difficult one. Messier 78, also known as NGC 
2068 and the Casper, <laughs> the Friendly Ghost Nebula, is a reflection nebula in the constellation Orion. It's the brightest diffuse reflection nebula of a group of nebulas that include NGC 2064, NGC 2067, and NGC 2071. Let's not forget about star clusters. M79 is a star cluster that is not photographed that much, but it's so good for any small telescope, cell phone, and also for smart telescope. While most globular clusters in our Milky Way galaxy appear around the galactic core in Sagittarius, M79 is one of the few seen on the opposite side of the sky, away from the galaxy's center. The Christmas tree cluster, and this one is a great target right now for smart telescope. Dwarf telescope, sister, go and get it. The Christmas tree cluster is a young open cluster located in the constellation Monoceros. It is part of a star forming region, NGC 2264, which also contains the Cone Nebula, the Fox Fur Nebula, and the Snowflake Cluster. Well, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on February 1st with Gems of the Universe for February 2025.